Hello class, and welcome to today's algebra lesson, which is about literal equations. By the end of today's lesson, you will re be able to rearrange equations to solve for a specific variable. A literal equation is an equation with more than one variable. Typically, you're going to see this when it comes to specific formulas. So, for example, the area formula of a rectangle is area is equal to length times width. This is a literal equation because we have more than one variable being used within our problem. The goal then with solving literal equations is to be able to isolate different variables. So right now the area is isolated. I could rearrange this so that the length is isolated or that the width is isolated. When we do this, the rearranging of equations, we still follow sad meat. So first we check if there's anything to simplify, any distributive property, or any uh, combining of like terms. In this case, there is not. I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna show how you could solve for the n variable, and then I'm gonna do the same thing solving for the p variable. So we're starting with the same equation. When we're solving for n, I want n to be isolated by itself. So the first thing I'm gonna check is anything being added or subtracted to n. In this case, the 6p is being added. So I'm gonna go ahead and subtract 6p from both sides of the equation. That's gonna give me 15 minus 6p is equal to 3n. We can't actually do the subtracting because the 15 does not have a variable. I still need to keep solving so that n is completely by itself, and when I do that, I'm gonna divide both sides by three to get rid of that. Now when we look on the left side, in this case, 15 can be divided by 3 and negative 6 can be divided by 3. So what that means is I can reduce this down to 5 minus 2p is equal to n. And we no longer have to write it as a fraction. So because 15 and 6 could both be divided by 3, I can reduce it. If this had been 15 and 7 instead of 6, I would have had to leave it in the fraction form of 15 minus 7p over 3, or in the parentheses form of 15 minus 7p in parentheses divided by 3. So if you can't divide both values by the denominator, you would leave it as is in that fraction form. But in this case, we could divide both of them. So I get an answer of five minus two P is equal to N. When I come over here to solve the other variable, so to isolate P, I'm gonna start by subtracting three N from both sides, and I get 15 minus three N is equal to 6p. As I finish solving this, I'm gonna go ahead and divide by six on both sides. 15 cannot be divided by six, and three can't be divided by six, but as I'm writing it in fraction form, I can reduce because everything can be divided by three. So as I write out my fraction, my answer here is gonna be five minus 1n, or you can just write n, over 2 is equal to p. You could also write it in that parentheses format, so 5 minus n, and then outside divided by 2 is equal to p. Both of those are acceptable answers in this problem because I could divide, I could reduce everything. Go ahead and try this one on your own. In this case, we're gonna subtract the 4y and then divide by eight because everything can't be divided by eight. I just leave it in the fraction form like this example shows or I put it in the parentheses form like this example shows. If you have the variable that you are solving for listed twice, so in this case, I've got a three x on the left side and I've got an x z on the right side, you have to get the variables to the same side first. So I'm going to subtract this xz from both sides of the equation 
so that both of my x's show up on the left side. So now I have 3x minus 2y minus xz is equal to 5. Now I still want to get the x by itself, so this 2y does not belong on the left side of the equation. So I'm going to add 2y to both sides of my equation so that only things with x's are left on that left side. So I've got 3x minus xz is equal to 5 plus 2y. Now, this is a new step where we are going to what I like to call reverse the distributive property. So I've got an x in the first term and an x in the second term. If I pull the x to the outside and undistribute that, I'm left with a 3 from the first term and subtracting z from the second term. So instead of distributing and getting 3x minus xz, I take the x to the outside and I'm left with just the 3 minus z in the parentheses, and that's going to equal 5 plus 2y. Now I still don't quite have that x isolated, even though it's outside of the parentheses. It's still being multiplied with that value inside the parentheses. So I need to get rid of that multiplication by dividing by 3 minus z on both sides of my equation. So my final answer then becomes x is equal to 5 plus 2y over 3 minus z. If you wanted to write it in that parentheses format, it would be x is equal to the first parentheses, keeping the 5 plus 2y together, and then divided by parentheses again, keeping the 3 minus z together. So we can do that by, or we can rearrange to that division sign by using the parentheses to keep our numerator and denominator together. Go ahead and try this one on your own. First step is going to be to subtract that 8a so that we have all of our a's on the left side of the equation. Reverse distributive to pull the a to the outside and then divided by q minus 8 and leaving us with either the fraction form or the parentheses form of the equation. Last problem here, first thing I want you to do is to solve for the radius. So isolate the variable r. When I do that, I divide by 2 pi on both sides, and I get c divided by 2 pi is equal to r. Now, because we have an actual formula here, the purpose of rearranging with a literal equation is going to be then to be able to plug into a value. So what is the radius if c is equal to 7 5.36 centimeters. I want you to go ahead and plug in and solve that equation. So we have 75.36 over 2 pi, which gives us 75.36 over 6.28, giving us a final answer of 12 centimeters. If you have a question about this or anything else from the lesson, please feel free to reach out and let me know.